Hi everybody, Sean Mays here with Sean America Audio and Visual. This is our next pinhole photography lesson. This is going to be a two-part lesson. First lesson, we're going to do a build that will help you better control your exposure time. And in the second episode, I'm going to introduce to you a great program that I use for the computer called Pinhole Designer, readily available on my website. And I use that to help me calculate a lot of the things we're going to talk about this first episode. The next episode, I'm going to show you all about how it works. So anyhow, first I wanted to start off in this episode talking about a few terms that are going to help you better understand how to control your camera. First term I wanted to bring up is aperture. What is the aperture? Essentially, the aperture in your camera is the pinhole, but essentially it's a device that restricts the amount of light coming into your camera. The next term I want to talk to you about is focal length. This is an important one. Focal length, what it is, it is the distance from your aperture to your light sensitive material. Anyways, that's important for this next term, which is f-stop. f-stop is a ratio between your aperture and your focal length, which gives you a number commonly referred to as the f number or just an f-stop number and in pinhole photography pinhole cameras are generally considered anything with an f-stop higher than 128 the larger the number the less light that comes in to your camera okay what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to the workshop and we're going to do our build this build is going to be a modification from the build we did in our last lesson and this is going to allow us to more precisely control our exposure times for those of you who have an SLR or digital SLR camera that does not have an internal light meter that can meter down to the low light levels that are used in pinhole photography. The materials you're going to need are pretty much the same as you needed on our last project. What you'll need is some brass shim stock. You can also use an aluminum soda can. That works just as well. You'll need a set of micro drill bits. You can get these at most hardware stores. You'll need a chuck for a micro drill bit, usually available right next to those bits. You'll need the body cap that we drilled a hole in from last time, a small piece of fine grit sandpaper, a little water because that's wet dry sandpaper, of course your camera, and some sort of precision measuring device. In my case I'm using an electric caliper, but you don't have to. Alright, so what you want to do first of all is you want to measure the distance from the back of the camera to right here. I've already measured that with my caliper and I got a measurement of 44 and a half millimeters. Now using pinhole designer which we'll discuss in the next episode I calculated that I needed a certain sized drill bit unfortunately the drill bit that I needed was smaller than what I had the smallest drill bit I have here is a diameter of 0 0.0342 millimeters so I calculated based on that focal length that I will get an f-stop of 130. So what we're going to want to do here is get out the appropriate bit. You'll notice that some of these bits when you get them are written in gauges. For example this tiny bit is an 80 gauge drill bit. You might not even really be able to see it. On my website will be available a chart that you can download that'll tell you what those gauges work out to in millimeters. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and carefully insert this into our micro drill bit chuck, like so. Now, what we simply want to do is take our material and drill a hole right into it. Now because we are drilling it with a precision drill bit we know that the hole will be the same size as the drill bit and you want to do this by hand. 
you don't want to use a Dremel tool or a drill because if that drill bit is not perfectly centered your hole will not be perfectly round and trust me this will be very simple to do by hand we've gone through that and we'll go ahead and take put our bit back anyhow now that you have your hole in there which you, you can probably see now go ahead and do the same thing that you did when you punched it with a sewing needle take a little water and your fine paper and sand both sides of that make sure you spend a little time here I'm doing this kind of quickly just to demonstrate and then of course take a paper towel and just wipe it off and you should have yourself a nice little pinhole you might not be able to see that real well so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to go ahead and cut that out of here just like we did last time last time you may remember that we cut it out first I'm cutting it out after I've drilled it uh, that doesn't really matter how you do that anyhow at this point you've got that okay now go ahead and tape your pinhole into the body cap of your camera just like you did last time I'm going over a lot of this very quickly because if you'd like more detailed instructions you can always look back at lesson number one where we did the full build on this okay so anyways you've got that you can go ahead and put that guy in your camera here and you're ready to go let's go talk about how to actually use that information remember all the calculations for how we got these numbers we'll discuss in the episode directly following this one where we learn how to use pinhole designer okay so now we've got your camera with your precision cut pinhole in it now with pinhole designer it's going to give you a whole bunch of exposure information that it'll calculate I've printed it out put it on a nice little card here You probably can't read this real well that's okay we'll take a look at that in our next episode okay so what you're gonna need to make this whole thing work is you're gonna need a light meter if you don't have one you can hop out on eBay pick one up real easily okay so what you're gonna want to do here is realize that no light meter is going to be able to meter to an f-stop of 130 so what do you do well with pinhole designer it makes exposure calculations based on an F of 22 and then it just gives you a simple conversion table so what I've done here is I've already set up my light meter to my film speed which in my case is a film speed of 200 and I've set it to measure for a f-stop of 22 so I'm gonna quick take a reading okay this has told me that I need one eighth of a second. So let's take a look at the sheet that they gave me. And on here, one eighth of a second, I would need an exposure time of six seconds when I'm using my camera with an f stop of 130. Okay, now that's easy. Now, if you've got an SLR that you can actually set to six seconds, you're set. Put this on a tripod to hold it nice and steady. Press the button, you're golden. If not, a lot of them will have a bulb mode, which means for as long as you hold this shutter button, the shutter will remain open, and then as soon as you release your finger, the shutter closes. So, all you'd have to do in that case is hold the shutter. I like to use a stopwatch sometimes to increase accuracy of the time. So that's really a great way to learn how to control the exposure time of your camera. So anyhow, happy shooting. This is Sean Hayes with Sean America Audio and Visual. Have a great day.